Welcome back guys. So today is the day we've all been waiting for, including myself, the day I've been very, very excited about. Today is the day we're gonna now fully put the M5 back together and we're also gonna fill the car up with coolant and get this car started and see how it all runs. Now, obviously I could have done this off a of video and then let you guys know the outcome, but I wanted to let you guys hear it start up for the first time after you've seen all the work I've actually put into this car. So if many of you guys don't know, I have already put some of the cars back together. So I've already done the air filters, the plenums are back on, everything's reconnected. I thought I would leave that off the video as you saw me remove everything on another video. But today I'm gonna to be topping up the coolant and we're gonna let that get all around the system because obviously we've got a new thermostat, new water pump, and I'm also gonna cycle the ignition on and off because of the new injectors so I can let the fuel rail pressurize to get fuel to the new injectors before we finally start it over and see how the car runs with the new solenoids intact on the car. Now, where this car's been sitting for over three weeks, I am expecting it to run very, very rough at first. And then also I'm expecting a lot of condensation because it has been sitting. Therefore, I am gonna let you guys hear it, but we're gonna crack on now and fill the corner up and let's hope for the best and fingers crossed, everything goes perfectly. Now we've replaced everything on this car. So let's get on to the video. God damn, get it done with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys. So you can see here, everything is back in position the way it should be. All the KNNs are on. Everything's looking perfect and all good. We're all good to go. All we got to do now is top up the coolant. And if you see, I've got the lid off. I am going to start putting the coolant in. Then we're going to put the heaters on very, very low on the hottest setting and let it cycle all around the system so we can get the coolant flushing around the system. The coolant I am going to be using today is this one right here, which is Extreme G48. This is the blue coolant that BMW recommends. And this is going to be the one we're going to be using in the M5. So we're going to go ahead and start pouring it in. Let's hope there's no leaks. Now this will be very, very empty. As you saw, I've drained it from the whole engine, um, the water pump itself, the radiator. So we are gonna be retopping up it all quickly. By the way, this is ready mix, so I don't need to add water to it. So you can see there, this has took a whole five liter bottle. It's completely empty. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start, put the ignition on and just put the heaters on low. Now, if you can hear, you can hear the actual water valve opening and circulating all the coolant through there. So that's what we wanted with the heaters on low. Now we're gonna to top up more coolant. So I do have another one right here. So we're just gonna to top it up even more because five liters wouldn't have been enough for this system. So we'll just fill it up some more. And if you can see there, the float has now come up. We'll just let it bubble around. As you can see there, it's going back down. That's where all the coolant's being sucked through all the system. So we'll let it just set itself out because obviously we don't want to start it with low coolant. So we'll just leave the heaters going. If you can see, the dipstick's going down, which is what we want. As it's pulling itself all around the system. And we'll just keep topping it up. That's gonna get all the air out of the system before we start the car up. So we don't end up with no air bubbles in the system or trapped air so the car can come up temperature correctly. So then we can check everything. And I believe that's done it for now. Any other air will bleed itself to the top of the system as these got a self bleeding system. So we won't have to really worry about it. We've got the majority of it out. Now we're gonna go ahead and start it up for the first time. So I'll leave you guys there while we just crank this over. We're just gonna turn off the ignition once and cycle it for the injectors, for the fuel to get to all the injectors. We'll turn it off again, and then turn the ignition on again. And at the moment, the battery is flat from where the car was left open for many, many um, days without it being locked. And obviously with the bonnet open, it's drained the battery. So I need to get a jump pack on it to jump start it, to fire the car up. 
So it's to be expected, guys. At the end of the day, I haven't used this car. As I said to you, it's been sitting here for three weeks. We are going to use my Lockie 4. If any of you guys would have seen on my video, I did get this sent to me. So this is the time to test it now. The jump pack to see how well it works. Um, it's the first time I'm using it for a jump starter. And if you can see, that's my Lockie 4 right there. Um, and you can see right here, we're going to plug it up to the car and it should jump it. So we'll do that. So we can get this car to start and run. So now it's working. We're going to go ahead and try and turn it over now. And just like that, fully running. Now, if you did see the smoke, that was from all the silicone that I used to stick the plenums back down onto the throttle bodies. That's nothing to worry about. And it will be smoke from, you know, coolant, from it being sitting there from condensation also, where the car just got a lot of condensation build up from sitting for a long time. But you can hear how nice it's running. Once it's up to temperature, we will be doing the bleed procedure because right now we cannot bleed the system until the car comes up to temperature because ISTA or any other scanner will not let us do it until the oil temperature comes up. And also, I want to make sure there's no leaks or nothing before I actually run that procedure as it keeps the engine revs very, very high. So if you can see here, guys, it's now calmed down on the idle and it's running absolutely beautifully. You can hear it right there. It's idling perfectly, it's running nicely. Bearing in mind we've done the water pump, we've done the thermostat, we've done the injectors, we've done the solenoids and the car runs absolutely faultlessly. Obviously the only issue I had was the battery was flat and as you would have seen, all the smoke, that was condensation build up where it had been raining obviously in the UK and obviously it was cold here as well. So there was a lot of rainwater and build up underneath the car obviously on the grass, creating a lot of smoke. But as you can see, it's all cleared up now. And also I used a lot of silicone um, on the intakes as well, on the intake plenums. But apart from that, you can see the car runs absolutely beautiful now. Now, if you can hear just there, you can hear the Vanos adjusters. They're a bit noisy and that's purely because I need to bleed the Vanos system, as I said. You can clearly hear them. They're very, very noisy where the oil isn't all around the solenoid yet properly and therefore it's making that vanos rattle so i am going to be bleeding the system to get rid of this vanos rattle noise which we'll be doing soon in which i'll be showing you how to do that and i'm going to be using the auto fix to actually do that procedure instead of using ista because it just makes it longer to actually plug up the laptop so you'll see here on the auto fix we're going to be doing bleed vanos variable camshaft timing system so we're just going to click f1 and this is all the same on um any autel you get so we're just going to click continue and continue and you'll see there we will now do the bleeding procedure as you can see there it's now bleeding the system you can hear it doing this thing which can take 17 minutes in total to do so we'll come back after that's done you're going to see there it's now going to bleed out all the camshafts system so we can bleed the whole vanos system on the engine itself so we can get this engine up to proper timing and make the solenoids function as they're meant to be intended because you can hear that the Vanos system isn't working properly because of the new solenoid. So we'll let it do its thing and then we'll come back to the video after. You can see this can take a long time to do, but it does its thing and you can hear what it's doing to the engine. It's just gonna bleed all the Vanos system on its own. The computer does it all. And I'll show you how to get to the function after. It's very, very simple. It's in the service mode, under powertrain, and you'll find this setting straight away in the Autel system. And they can all do this because it is crucial that this has to be done if you touch anything to do with the Vanos system, so otherwise it will be out of timing. And you can hear there again, where the Vanos is out of time and they're causing a rattle. That's what the bleed procedure is gonna fix, that annoying rattle. Gonna bring the solenoids, fill them up with oil pressure so they can keep the oil flow to the adjusters as needed. Okay guys, so if you can see there, we've got 10 minutes left of the bleed process. Now in total, this does take 16 minutes and you can see they're still actually running the bleed procedure. And once it's actually finished, we'll come back to the video. You can probably hear the engine making all different noises. 
and I will show you how to enter this function at the end of the video so that way you guys can actually access it if you do have an Autel system any of them will do this procedure and I'll show you how to get to that once we actually finish the bleed procedure on this car you can hear though it's bleeding still and that's the noise it will make it's perfectly normal as it bleeds all the Vanos systems nearly there guys we've only got two minutes left as you can see it is a very very time consuming process but it has to be done the moment you touch anything on the Vanos system and that's why I'm doing this otherwise your car will not run perfectly and all you end up doing is destroying the Vanos units and destroying the new Vanos solenoids and it is critical you do this on the E60 M5 on the S85 engine S65 if you touch anything to do with the Vanos system at all you must do this procedure okay now that's done now to test the vanos solenoids the values from what they were before if you look at my previous video to what they are now you just want to press f2 and you'll see here you get the full data and you'll see there that was my old values on my um for my old solenoids that I had in the car if we just press continue we'll just perform it run engine at idle speed and if we just click continue it will now run a test and you can see the values there are much much higher now than what they were before. Now we'll just run all his tests. And once it completes, it will then show you all the spread, great and small, and if they're all fine, the valve quality and everything else, which I'll show you once this finishes. So you can see here it says no fault is detected with the variable camshaft time in Vanos system. We click continue, the results are now shown. You'll see here all the results are okay and great. The same ones are great. The next lot are perfect and the next lot are perfect also because as you know we've replaced all four so every single one of them is absolutely perfectly and spot on and therefore that's the Vanos bleed procedure and the test complete on the S85 and that is what you need to do if you touch any of the solenoids or anything to do with the Vanos system on this car and there is all the values on the system itself okay so how you get into this system many of you are going to ask me when you load up this which after you've scanned your car on your auto you're going to come up with all these options you're going to want to press service after you press service you're going to then select powertrain engine electronics variable camshaft time and ventilation now it is called different compared to what it was on um ISTA. it calls vanos bleed procedure but on here it's called the variable camshaft timing system the bleeding procedure then you click continue you have bleed vanos system which is what you need to do first after you've bled the vanos system it will then perform the vanos test on its own or you can perform either on this scan tool. So this scan tool can do it all. So if you do wanna check the quality of your solenoids before you actually remove them, you would come to this one. And if you wanna bleed the vanos system because you know your solenoids might not be bled correctly from either having a service or if you've had the rod bearings changed, if you had the rod bearings changed, then you must use this procedure also to bleed the system correctly. Otherwise, again, you'll lack oil lubrication to the vanos because obviously the vanos line, especially if you replace it, needs to be bled. Otherwise, again, it will make this noise. But as you can see, this is everything you're going to need for the Vanos system itself to perform the Vanos test and obviously bleed the system. It's very, very easy, and this is available on all the auto fixes, which is using all tail systems. So if you do have an all tail system, you'll be able to do this. I will link this device down below for you guys to go and purchase it if you really want to buy this device, or you can just buy one of my all tail systems that I've got also, and it will do the same thing if you're in need of this device. Okay, guys. So as you've seen there, I've now completed putting the E60 M5 back together. Everything is running absolutely perfectly now. The Vanos system isn't making that loud noise like it was because we've actually bled the system. I've also deleted all the adaptions because we fitted all new parts. So I wanted to learn all the new parts and lose the settings of the older parts. And now I believe you should do that, especially when you install new Vanos solenoids so the camshaft can get used to the new ones and not the old ones. The same as like on the M52 and all them other engines that use the Vanos system. Always delete the adaptions and refresh it based on the new stuff because otherwise it loses them settings and what it does ends up remembering how the old ones run and you don't want your car running like that so now this car is probably going to drive and sound beautiful when I drive it I'm very very happy with the process everything's been completed now and now we're going to be enjoying the S85 I'm going to be taking it on a test drive and actually making sure it drives the way it should now but I just want to thank a lot of you guys for actually watching all the videos I've actually done in this car and I hope you've enjoyed seeing me strip down this E60 M5 
DC 60 M5 now is probably the only one in the UK having all major jobs completed and you will not find probably another one probably anywhere in the world that's been this looked after like this one has by someone like myself who's put all this money into this car to make it what it is today. As many of you guys know, these cars go very, very neglected and people leave them. When they start coming into the high maintenance items, people get rid of them and don't want to do it. So thank you very much for watching guys. This is BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.